Hello and welcome. This video will cover manually upgrading your ESM if the UI is inaccessible and then installing the ESM administrator application. For this task, you will need an SFTP client like WinSCP, an SSH client like PuTTY, and a Windows system with network access to your ESM. You will also need the correct upgrade file for your specific appliance. For this example, I will be manually upgrading an 11.3.2 ENM ELM to version 11.4.1. .1. Once you have everything you need, the first step is to get the upgrade file in the right directory on the appliance. I'll be using WinSCP for this. I've got it logged in here with the Windows system on the left and the root directory of the ENM ELM on the right. Next, I'll navigate to the correct directory. We'll go up one directory, then to USR, local, ESS, update. Next, we'll drag the update file into this directory on the ENM ELM. Once the file has finished uploading, we'll move on to PuTTY. Now remember, the upgrade file that I'm using is the upgrade file for a combo box, an ENM ELM. If you're running a standalone ESM, your upgrade file may look different. I have two PuTTY sessions open here, on the left for running commands, and the right for tailing var log messages. The second putty window is optional, but it helps with keeping track of services when they're stopping and starting. Next, we'll verify that the upgrade file is in the right directory with the command ls l slash usr slash local slash ess slash update. And we can see that the upgrade file is in the right directory. Now we'll be stopping services, then rebooting the appliance to apply the update. Keep in mind, I'm doing this on live systems can take much longer to shut down, reboot, and apply updates depending on the specifics of the deployment. As a general rule of thumb, the larger and busier a deployment is, the longer this process will take. Let's also have a quick look at the disk space on this system. ESM VMs require 500 gigabyte hard drives and at least 55 gigabytes free to upgrade. For an ENM ELM, this is increased to 150 gigabytes free. Looks like we're good here. So to begin, we'll start by stopping CP service. Service, CP service, stop. This will stop all of the front end ESM services. On my test system, this should complete in less than a minute, but on live systems, this could take up to 30 minutes. You'll know the command has finished running when the command prompt returns. You'll also see the message stopping ESS CP service OK show up in the logs. If this takes longer than 30 minutes, you can contact McAfee support and we'll help make sure the service isn't stuck. And there we go. Now that CP service has stopped, we'll stop DB server. On version 10, this is where the majority of the ESM's data would reside, and the command could take longer than an hour to stop for larger deployments. But on version 11, this database is much smaller and shouldn't take much more than five or 10 minutes to stop. We'll run the command service, DB server stop. On my test system, this should take about a minute. But if you suspect that the service is stuck, go ahead and give us a call at McAfee support and we'll take a look for you. Once DB server has stopped, we'll move on to the next step. Because I'm running an ENM ELM, we'll need to stop the Nitro services as well. This step would be unnecessary on a standalone ESM. The command for this is Nitro stop dash dash n o d 
This command will stop the Nitro related services, receiver services, and Elm services on this combo box. On my test system, it should take a few minutes, but even in a larger environment, this step should not take longer than 30 minutes. So check in with McAfee support if the process is hanging. Once the Nitro services have stopped, we'll issue the reboot command. Now that all of the services have stopped, we'll issue the reboot command. After rebooting, the system will apply the update and start services automatically. On a live system, this process can take up to 30 minutes before the ESM is available via SSH again, and may take more than an hour before the UI is up and running. And to make sure the system actually reboots, I'm going to run a ping test in a command prompt over here that will let me know when the ESM is no longer available on the network. Sometimes updates require multiple reboots, so it isn't uncommon to see this go up and down a few times. Once it starts pinging consistently again, I'll know it's time to SSH back in. After returning consistently for about five minutes, the ping test is now no longer coming back. This is a sign that the ESM has gone down for a second reboot during the upgrade. We'll wait for it to come back online and then we'll try to SSH in. The ping test is starting to return again, so we'll go ahead and try to log back into the system. I'll restart the PuTTY session, and now it's giving us a login prompt. We'll go ahead and log in. And there we are. Now let's go ahead and check the build stamp to make sure the system did upgrade. For that, I'll run the command cat space slash etc slash build stamp. And you can see the build stamp has changed to 11.4.1. Even though the system is now available via SSH, we do have to wait for the services to finish starting before we can log in and install the ESM admin app. The longest step of this process is for the system to start Snowflex, which is undergoing some changes due to the update. This step may take as long as 18 to 25 minutes to fully start, and it's not uncommon to see these kind of errors that, that I'm seeing while tailing the logs while it is doing so. Once Snowflex is finished started, we can check the logs to see if CP service has started, which will be the sign that it is time for us to log in via the UI. After waiting for about 20 minutes, I've noticed that the errors that I was seeing in the logs are no longer occurring, which tells me it's time to check if CP service has started successfully. The way I like to do that is by running this command, cat var log messages, pipe grep dash I successfully. What I'm looking for is this line right here, CP service D started successfully at 2220 minutes. If I compare that to the current time, that was about 10 minutes ago. So that tells me that we're ready to log in via the UI. Just a note before we install the admin app, if you are not running version 11.4.1 .1 or a later version, you will need to apply the appropriate hotfix to your ESM before you can install the app. For more guidance on that process, you can check out our other video, McAfee Sim, patching your ESM and installing the ESM admin application. Let's refresh. And sure enough, we're ready to log in. Now, in order to download the ESM admin app after an upgrade, you'll need to make sure you clear your browser cache and that flash is blocked on your browser. I've already done so on this one. So let's log in as normal. As you can see, even with flash blocked, the HTML5 dashboards load successfully. However, if you try to navigate to a part of the system that's running flash, like system properties, 
it will redirect you to this page where you can download the ESM admin app. We'll go ahead and click download, save the file, and run the file as administrator. Once the admin app is installed, you no longer need administrator privileges to run the application. And there we are. Let's go ahead and test it out. As you can see, it's installed here on the desktop. We can open it. And you'll see this kind of error message pop up on most systems. Uh, if you have not installed a valid SSL certificate into your ESM, like I have not, you'll get this error. But you can confirm it will not prevent you from getting into the ESM. This comes preloaded with the ESM's IP address already in it. So all we have to do is hit next. This will bring us to the same login screen you would get as if you were connecting with a browser. So we'll log in as normal here. And you'll see the same thing logging in here as you would logging in via a browser. With the exception of if you navigate to a part of the site that uses Flash, you are no longer blocked. The application will run that part of the site for you. And that's it. That covers manually upgrading the ESM and installing the admin app. Thank you for watching.